Oh, hello. Welcome to part three of this little series. Today we're talking about the people's favorite, QLab. And by the people's favorite, I mean my favorite. I think QLab is one of the best things that I've ever come across. I've used it in all levels of and spaces of the industry that I've worked in. We've used it in small venues and in little fringe shows all the way up to in commercial theater. It is used in, I'm gonna go ahead and confidently say every single major musical in the world. But what the hell is QLab? The actual definition of QLab says it way better than my pea brain could, so I'm just gonna read it for you. QLab is a Q-based multimedia playback software package for Mac intended for use in theater and live entertainment. Yes, it is for Mac. Unfortunately, Apple has dominated the theater and entertainment workspace as well by making programs like this. You really do need a MacBook, but there is a free version of QLab. It is not something that you need to buy. In order to get certain features, there is a version that you do need to buy, but this is something that you could claim on tax if it is something that you get to at that point. And if you are running so much of your show off of it, it is something that I think is worth it. As a tech who has had to operate shows that I just wish had invested in QLab, it is so fucking worth it. It will help you to get any tech to achieve the same results doing your show, making it look uniform everywhere you go without you having to tour one person who knows how to do all of the weird bitsy cues you've got. But QLab is incredibly overwhelming if you have no idea what it is and you just open it. Even for me as somebody who's used QLab for years and years and years, I still look at it and its functions and I am just a little bit intimidated because the options are endless. You can do literally anything with this program, but don't let that intimidate you because we can still use it at a more intimate scale. We can still use it for our shows. We're just ignoring the features that don't serve us yet and focusing on the ones that do. So today I'm gonna to show you a few of the basic functions and ways that I think you can use QLab in a show small cabaret, hour long comedy show, even opening for bands, small theater shows, these are simple cues, but they will be easy for you to execute and use and communicate to somebody else and put into your tech script. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make sound cues, how to set those up, how to add pre-weights, how to stop them, how to add fades, how to create groups, a bunch of basic stuff that actually will be really helpful to you and that you can use in many different ways throughout your shows. If you are new here, my name is Monique. I make content around the entertainment industry, specifically from the experience of somebody who has worked in it for a very long time, mostly in sound, but also the experience of working in sound where you're expected to then also do everything else. I have tech directed venues, managed small venues, worked fringe festivals and comedy festivals. And for the last couple of years, I have been working and touring in professional music theater in Australia. This has been a small little series about the things that you take to venues and that you can use if you are doing like a fringe show or a comedy show or something like that. So if you are new to the series, go and check out the other videos associated. Otherwise, this one may not make a lot of sense. Otherwise, if you're just here for the QLab stuff, welcome. QLab can be super, 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 super complicated and can be used for very dramatic, dramatic shows. But we're gonna do just like a basic, what I think you would need or could be useful for you doing the kind of shows that we've been talking about, you know, like your hour comedy show, fringe show, even maybe as a band, if you've got things for your intro, outro, that kind of thing. So when you open up QLab, you're getting your workspaces. We're gonna open a brand new workspace. Lots of buttons, not a lot of descriptions about what they are or what they do. Honestly, some of them you don't even need yet. And I'm just gonna show you the ones that are actually gonna be useful to you. That one is for creating a group. Q, we'll talk a little bit about those soon. Audio Q, there's a fade, and the rest of these are just like triggers for the cues. These are really the only ones that we're gonna focus on. The fade, the audio, and the group. That's really all we're gonna use for this session. To start off, last time I said it's actually really handy if you put your pre-show music within this file so it all comes in the same space. There are ways that you can attach Spotify playlists to your QLab session, but honestly, I would really highly recommend picking four or five songs, maybe more than that, depending on how long people are gonna be waiting around in the venue before your show starts. In some small venues, people are gonna be hanging out there because it's attached to the bar area for half an hour before the show starts. In other places, they're gonna be let in five minutes before the show, and you really don't need a lot of music but the highlight of having the files of your pre-show music downloaded onto your computer and put into your QLab file is that no matter what the Wi-Fi is like, no matter what's going on with your Spotify, there are so many reasons why having a Spotify playlist can fuck up. I've seen the Wi-Fi stop working. I've seen people not be able to log into their Spotify. I've seen other people be using that account on a different device and they need to stop it or it's starting to mess up. I've seen people not have a premium account so they start to get ads. Pick four or five songs that are related to what your show is or that set the vibe. Download them, 
buy them offline, put them into your QLab file. To make a pre-show music queue, we're gonna start a group. Once you put in a queue, you get all of these other tabs down here, which we're gonna go through and use. Again, some stuff in here, not even worth you being bothered about. The rest, actually quite helpful. So we're gonna start with pre-show music. The great thing about a group, which I really enjoy, is that you can hide the details of what's in it. So for something like a pre-show playlist, if you've got just every single song that's in the playlist laid out, it's gonna fill up your QLab session and and that can be quite overwhelming when you open it up and can make things look a bit messy. That's the kind of thing that helps me in a workspace to have a neat and tidy QLab session. So I try to keep it as tidy as possible. We're then gonna add in a couple of audio cues. We're then gonna drag them into the pre-show music group. Something that we do have to do with the pre-show music group though is to select in mode how the group works. If you leave it on timeline, when you hit this cue for pre-show music, every single source inside the group is going to play all at once. So we need to set it to playlist so that it plays one after the other. Once we head down to audio cue two, once you go down here into target, this is where you're gonna pick what is going on to this cue and where you find the music. Pick a source that's not gonna change because if you disrupt this pathway then the QLab won't be able to find the original song. So we're just going to select a couple of songs. You can use go to trigger cues or you can just press spacebar on your keypad. Keypad, that's not a word. For example now if I press the spacebar while I've got the pre-show music cue highlighted we're going to get a song start to play. Great we've got pre-show music it's all in there ready to go. What about when we need to start the show? You don't just want to abruptly stop music and have it be a real awkward jarring moment. Ideally you would want to fade music out, something that could potentially go with a fade out of light so that you can then make a pre-show announcement or an acknowledgement to country or whatever you're doing at the start of your show. So for that we're going to add a fade. The little fade cue is up here and what we're going to do with the fade is have the target instead of it being for a source to go find a song like we had on the other cues. This cue target is going to be the cue that has the group so number one and it will show you that it's selected the right thing because it will change the title to make sure that it works go into levels click main and it will come up with this that's what you want and then click stop target when done this will fade it to a stop if you go back to basics you can choose how long it's going to fade out in the duration part i would pick like five seconds so then if we go back and we go into the pre-show music and then we trigger that fade and stop cue. It's gonna fade out over five seconds, no matter what is playing in that group. Maybe you do want an abrupt stop though. Maybe that is part of the show. Maybe it's a moment where there's like, you know, scratch CD, everything stops. So we're gonna add in another song. I'm gonna change the name of this to song one, just so it looks neater. So we've got song one. Then we are going to add, if you go down to this bottom part of the screen, there is a toolbox that you can hide and get rid of. This side, it's just up here, but it shows you what it is, which is a little bit easier to follow. We're gonna add a stop. And then like we did for the fade, we're gonna target the right cue that the stop applies to. So that again, if we then go to song one, when we hit the stop cue, it will stop immediately. In some circumstances, depending on what is going on in your show, you might want a cue to happen, but the music to happen later. And what you would do for that is add a wait at the start of a song. So we're gonna add in another song. And at the start of this one, we're gonna add a pre-wait. So the pre-wait could be something like 10 seconds. Say there's a moment in your cabaret where you do something physical and that is the cue for the next song, but there is a moment of like waiting or pause where you're filling it in with something else and the song is meant to just start over the top of that. But it's really difficult for the person operating to know when you are going to sing. If you pick a cue point where you both know, great, this is the cue I'm gonna go off of and then 10 seconds after that, the song is gonna start, it frees you up as a performer to do whatever you want in that 10 seconds and not have to worry about giving the person operating such an obvious cue if it's a more subtle moment. That's just one example of how it could be useful. There are a million others, but you can see over here on the side, the pre-wait section. So if we go ahead and go that cue, you will see it go to 10 seconds before we start to hear any music. 
one of the greatest things that you can ever, ever remember when you are using QLab is that if you hit the escape button, it will stop whatever is happening. This is massively helpful because you can add triggers to your queues. If you are using somebody else's QLab file and you don't know exactly what is in it or there are weird triggers and you accidentally trigger a queue you don't mean to, hitting escape will very quickly fade out whatever queue that you're on. So just to show you again, this is what I just did. And now I'm hitting escape now. Very quickly fades out. Let's say that you're using sound effects and you have a sound effect that you want to start just before a song. Instead of that being two different cues, you can make the cues flow into each other. So to do that, we're gonna add two more audio cues. We've got a twinkle sound effect and then we've got a song. If we go back up to the first cue, so in this case it would be the sound effect, but you could do this in the opposite way as well, where you play a song and then there's a sound effect at the end. Down here, near the bottom of the basics tab, there is this little thing that says continue, and then you've got three options. Do not continue, auto continue, and auto follow. Do not continue is what we've used for all the others, where it will just go to the next cue, but it won't play it. If you select auto continue, it will immediately follow on and play both that cue and the cue after it at the same time. But if you select auto follow, it is going to start playing the sound effect and then it will immediately go on to the next cue without you having to touch the trigger again like this. Let's say I'm actually using that in a show and I want the sound effect to overlap the song a little bit. The first thing that I'm gonna do actually is trim this sound effect cue because the actual song in it ends way after, like the audio file we have ends after the sound effect is done. So what we're gonna do is go into time and loops. You can obviously do this in the alternate way as well, where if you've got like a bunch of time at the start of a song that you don't want there, and you want it to start at a certain point, or if you only wanna use certain part of a song, this is how you would do it. You go to the end back here, and if you just pull this across to wherever you want it to be, that immediately will shorten this cue. Because we want it to follow on straight away, we're gonna select auto continue, but I don't don't want it to start immediately as soon as the twinkle starts. I want it to start a few seconds after. So the twinkle cue is now about six seconds. And for song three, we're gonna put a pre-weight on there of four seconds so that it will start the cue and then it will start the next song after that pre-weight. So they will kind of go together, but in an interesting timing that we've selected without me having to trigger two cues and potentially stop the other one or fuck around with that like this. You can see in that moment that the pre-weight was counting down as the previous cue was already going. A couple of other things that I really like using in QLab is the memos, and I like to change colors. So if you go over here to this button, there is a memo cue. In this one, you just write words. In the name bar, you can write words. I like to do this to put in lighting cues into the QLab file. Not that they will operate the lighting, but so that I can follow just the QLab file if you know the show well enough. There are probably a million reasons that you could use this, but if you need a reminder of something, a cue that you always miss, you wanna put your lighting cues in here, anything like that, you would just write in there, go LX6 on clap if the cue is somebody, but make sure with those ones that you put auto follow on them because otherwise you're gonna have to trigger it as a cue to move on to the next one. Whereas if it is just there, it will auto follow. In this session, we've now got pre-show music, in show cues of lighting end of sound. So what I would do to look at this and make it a little bit easier, again, my brain is quite visual, so I don't like a messy cue lab and I do like it to be somewhat coordinated. Last week when we made our script, we made lighting and sound a different color within the script. So what I would do in this setting as well is make those things line up with what is on the cue lab. But just for a visual today, we're gonna make pre-show music one color down here in the corner of the cue information bit. There is a color and you can change it to whatever you want. So we're gonna make pre-show music and fade and stop pre-show music crimson. And it will then change the bar on here and the top here when you are clicked into the queue. Then we're gonna make song one, song two, song three, and the effects involved with it another color. 
And then down the bottom here, we've got a lighting cue. So we're going to make a lighting cue a completely different color again, so that you know that they're different, even just at a glance. So let's make that one green. The green kind of looks similar to that color, but you get it. You get what I'm trying to say. Something else that is really helpful and where a lot of mistakes can happen and have happened to me is you do not operate the show from this edit screen. There is another screen that takes away all of the ability to change things within these. And it's down here in the bottom corner on show. If you go into show, it is not going to give you all of the ways to edit the cues when you are using them, which is really helpful because if you start to panic and a cue has messed up in some way and you have all of those things around, you can very easily change information that you don't want to change. That's a really basic view of the stuff that I would use QLab for. You can get crazy with it. Like I said, some of the QLab files that I have seen specifically for companies like Token, who do a lot of comedy stuff in Australia, are crazy. They have so many effects. They've got projections. They've got video videos, they've got images, all kinds of stuff goes on through the QLab. The options are endless when you are using QLab, but just because something can be used for such huge shows doesn't mean it can't be helpful to you at a more intimate level. And that is it. Like I said, QLab has a million different things that you can use and different ways that you can use it. So if you are somebody who regularly uses QLab and you have some tips or things that you think will be really helpful to other people, feel free to leave a comment down below or even more helpful, head over to the Discord where you can post screenshots of the things that you are referring to so that we can all learn with you. If you are new here, please make sure you subscribe so that you can see next week's video and stick around for all the other stuff that we make. Every Monday there are new videos here on YouTube and we also stream live on Twitch. If there is anything else along this vein that you would like some videos made about, please let me know. I'm always open to making videos about this kind of stuff. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.